Hey guys, let's look at uh, lesson 59. This is called rearranging before substitution. If you remember, let's look at a substitution problem we've done before. If you recall, if you have an equation like this where it says, you know, x minus 7 equals 13 or whatever, you can do that because there's just one letter uh, in the equation. But if you have an equation, let's just say I'll take this one. If you have an equation like this that has two variables, I mean, you can't really solve that. There's an infinite number of solutions because you could always put something in for x and then something else for y would work. Uh, for example, if you had 1 for x here, 2 times 1 is 2. So 2 plus 3 times something would be 5. Well, that, be, that means 3y would be 3, which y would be 1. Of course, you could call x 0, too. If you said x was 0, then 3y would be just equal to 5, and, and, and y would be the, you know 5 divided by 3. In other words, you can't solve this equation that I've uh, you know, put a rectangle around unless you have two equations to mess with. And we've done these before where we just go, oh, we substitute. So we go, okay, x is the same thing as this. So I'm going to take this equation and rewrite it. Instead of writing an x right here, I'm going to write this, which is, you know, x is the same thing as that. So in other words, we have this equation, not 2 times x, but 2 times 2y plus 3, because they've told us that x is the same thing as that. Now, plus 3y equals 5. Now, look at this. Can you solve this equation? There's just one letter in it. The answer is yes, you can. You know, if you were just to go through and solve it, and you'd find out, you know, y is equal to this, and then you got it. Uh, then you could go back and go, okay, since so y equals whatever, you can stick it back in this equation and go, okay, well, x is equal to 2 times whatever y is, plus 3, boom, you got that, okay? Now, what they've done in, so far is they have given us equations like this where it's really easy just to go, oh, x is the same thing as that, you just substitute it. And what they're going to do next is make you do one extra step, and it's not that big of a deal. All you're going to do is make your second equation look like that bottom equation. In other words, x equals, or you might even go y. It might even be easier to go y equals whatever's on that right side. So let's look at our first one. If you need to, go ahead and pause it and copy it down. You can. All right. Okay, well, let's look. Um, use substitution to solve for x and y. Well, this equation looks like, the, it looks like there's a nice little x there for you. If you look at this, this bottom equation, it's 2x, negative 3y, and all that. You're going to have to do all kinds of things. Um, what you want to do, again, look at that circled red equation. You want that to look like the bottom equation. x equals 2y plus 3, or whatever it is. So what you're going to do is you're going to go, okay, I want x by itself in this top equation. So to do that, you're going to have to take this part right here and just move it over. And when you do that, you have x by itself. Then you have the negative 2y, of course, if you move it over, you're going to have positive 2y at minus 1, okay? All right, so now we have and something we can stick in to this bottom equation for the x, so we can solve for y and then solve our equation. So let's actually go ahead and write this equation over here, 2x minus 3y equals 4. Of course, we're not going to write x. Since we figured out that x is the same thing as 2y minus 1, that's what we're going to put in here. And then I'll copy the rest of the equation. Minus 3y equals 4. Minus 3y equals 4. Okay, so 2 times 2y, 4y. 2 times negative 1, negative 2. Minus 3y equals 4. And then 4y minus 3y is just y. So y minus 2 is equal to 4. Okay. Then, of course, you're just going to put positive 2, positive 2, and we have y is equal to 6. There we go. All right, halfway done. All we need to do now is find out what x is, because they ask you to solve for x and solve for y. So we can just use this equation if you want and go, okay, well, x is equal to 2 times y. y is 6, of course, minus 1. And, of course, you've probably seen that that's 12 minus 1 or just 11. And there we go. And again, you can go back in your two equations. I would especially do this if like you're taking in some kind of a standardized test or an SAT or uh, you know, uh, even a test for Saxon. Does x equal 11 and does y equal 6? Let's check it, okay? We say that x is 11 and y is 6. Let's try it. x is 11, so forget this, 11. 11 minus 2 times 6, that's 12. Is 11 minus 12 equal to negative 1? Yeah, that works. 
doesn't prove anything yet because we need to work for both of these equations. So let's try it again. 2 times x, well, we said x is 11. So 2 times 11 is 22, right? Uh, minus 3 times y, well, y we said was 4, correct? 3 times, uh, no, excuse me, y is 6. So 3 times uh, y would be 18. Well, is 22 minus 18 4? And the answer is yes, of course it is. We got it. So this proves it works, okay? All right, take a second, copy this one down. All right, which one do you think we should use to kind of mess around with and see if we can use to solve for that first part, like the uh, ones we did before, like x equals 2y minus 3? Probably you would say the top one, right? Now, because the second one has like the 4 and the 3 and all that, and you're getting into all this fraction mess if you move all that stuff around. But there is one extra step in this first one. Let's go ahead and just kind of write it down below here. 2x minus y equals 10. Now, if you go ahead and move the 2x over to the right, Again, you can either, in your mind, just go, I'm moving it over and changing the sign so it'll be negative 2x. Let's just go ahead and do that. All right, so let's say we got negative y equals, and then we'll say 10 minus 2x. In other words, you'll subtract 2x from both sides to, to move that over. Well, there's a problem here. Look at this. We don't want negative y. We, want, we just want y equals whatever's over there. So what we're gonna to have to do is visualize this as like being negative one y, because that's how many y's are there. So we're gonna to have to divide this by negative one. And of course, if you do that, you know, you're gonna to have to do that, that to both sides. So what you'll do is you will do that for each of these terms on the right as well. If you divide one side by negative, nine, uh, negative one, the other side gets divided by negative one as well. Happily, once you do that, you have y is equal to 10 minus, uh, excuse me, 10 divided by negative one is negative 10. And negative 2x divided by negative 1, in other words, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so that's our equation we're gonna mess with. Okay, so that was a little bit of an extra step there. So y equals negative 10 plus 2x, okay? And what we'll do, of course, is we will stick in this y value right here and get us a nice new equation and then solve for y. So we, uh, let's actually do it here. So we have 4x. We have minus 3 and then times y. We're not going to put a y. We're going to put negative 10 plus 2x. Negative 10 plus 2x. What does that equal? 16. Okay. And look at this equation, the green one. It's got all x's. We can solve it. Okay. So 4x and negative 3 times negative 10 is positive 30. Negative 3 times positive 2x is negative 6x equals 16, okay. Uh, 4x minus 6x is negative 2x plus 30 equals 16. Okay, negative 2x, okay, excuse me, let's get, get the uh, negative 30 out of there. Minus 30, minus 30, so negative 2x. Uh, 16 minus 30, I think 30 minus 16 is 14, but that would be negative 14. And divide by negative 2. And we have negative 14 divided by negative 2, which is, of course, 7. Okay, so x is 7. Now we can go and, uh, you know, we can go back to the first, the top equation there if we want to. And go, okay, well, let's try this here. And since we know what the x value is, we'll just stick it in there. 2 times x is 14, right? Minus y equals 10. Now you can either go, okay, 14 minus what gives you 10? You know the answer is 4, right? But let's say you forgot. You can go 14 minus y equals 10. Uh, subtract 14, that gives you negative y equals 10. Minus 14 is negative 4. And of course, you're going to divide by negative 1 because that's a negative. Negative 4 divided by negative 1 is 4. And there we go. And that's how you do those uh, with a negative. Okay, let's try one more. Give this a whirl. Uh, you know, if you want, you can try to solve it yourself. Just copy it down and give it a whirl. And uh, let's see how you do. So pause it. Okay. Well... I think probably all of us went to the bottom equation and went, oh, there's a 1y there. It'd probably be easier to move that over. So let's go ahead and do that. We have a y. 
and that's going to be 25. And if we move the 2x over, that means we're going to have to subtract it to move it over there. So that is your new equation. Okay. Okay. Let's take this and stick it right in this top equation here. All right. Now we've got 4 times x minus 2 times y. We're going to write y is the same thing as 25 minus 2x. That equals 38. All right. So 4x, negative 2 times 25, negative 50. Negative 2 times negative 2x, positive 4x, equals 38. Okay. Well, 4x, 4x, 8x. Negative 50, if that goes over to this side, what's it turn into? Positive 50, right? So 38 plus 50, 88. And we know that 8 times 11 is 80. Okay, now we know what x is. Let's <clears throat> take the bottom equation. What the heck here? Um, we'll go with this one. And we can figure out what y is. So 2 times x. I'm not going to write x. I'm going to write 11. So 2 times x is 22. Plus y is 25. Well, obviously, y is equal to 25 minus 22. And there we go. <clears throat> All right, and that's it. Okay, go ahead and try uh, uh, A, pause it, and uh, let's see how you do. Okay, I think we probably all would have taken the top equation and said, well, X is, I'm going to move this over, the negative 3Y, over to the right, <clears throat> and make that into X is equal to negative 7 plus 3Y. Very useful little equation there. Okay, now we know. Okay, so x is the same thing as negative 7 plus 3y. So that's where we're going to stick it in, right there. So we'll go 2 times negative 7 plus 3y, which is that, of course, minus 3y equals 4. And we can solve this equation because it has just y's. Good for us. 2 times negative 7, negative 14. 2 times 3y, 6y. And minus 3y equals 4. I'll get out. And let's see here. 6y minus 3y is 3y. If you move this to the right, that turns into positive 14. And 4 plus 14 is 18. And then y is equal to 6. All right, halfway done. If y is equal to 6, what I can do is just stick the 6 into, let's just go to that equation up here. We can use that one. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So x minus 3 times y, which we said was 6. There it is. That equals negative 7. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, x and then minus 3 times 6 is minus 18. That equals negative 7. If we move the negative 18 over there, it turns into positive 18. So negative 7 plus 18, same thing as x, or excuse me, same thing as 18 minus 7, which is 11. Just for the heck of it, let's just test our answers. Okay, again, we say that x is 11 and y is 6. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of all this stuff here. We say x is 11 and y is 6. Let's test it. Let's say 11 minus 3 times 6 is 18. Is 11 minus 18 negative 7? Yes, it is. Okay, let's try the second one. 2 times x is 22, right? Okay, negative 3 times 6 is 18. Does that equal 4? Yes, there we go. Okay, all right, pause it and then try uh, b and see how you do. Okay, I think, again, we all should have probably, well, you know what, I don't know. You could have chosen the top one or the bottom one. If you chose the top one, you would have had negative y equals 41 and then minus 4x. Then you would have had the, you don't want negative y, ugh, you just want positive y. So you would have had to do, every, divide by negative one on everything. Or you could have just gone to the bottom and done 2x plus y is 25, then moved over the 2x over. So you could have actually taken this equation, the bottom one, and said, okay, y is equal to 25 and then you move that over, that turns into negative 2x. So there is what y is equal to, okay? That 
is we're just going to stick back in the top equation. So let's rewrite the top equation. 4 times x minus y. Well, let's just put the whole thing in here. 25 minus 2x. 41. All right, so 4x minus 25. And opposite of negative 2x is positive 2x. That's 41. Okay, well, let's see here. 4x plus 2x is 6x. And we can take this negative 25 and mash it over there. And that's going to be positive 25, of course, if you move it or mash it. That's 66, so x is equal to 11. And there we go. Okay, well, that's 11. And well, we can stick, you know, I, either one of these equations you want to, you can stick the x back in there and see what happens here. Let's just use the bottom one. All right, let's try this one. That goes down here. And we have 2 times x. Well, we're not going to write 2 times x. We're going to write 2 times 11. That's 22. Plus y equals 25. And then again, y equals 3. It sounds strangely familiar. Anyway. Okay. Thank you, guys. See you next time.